Welcome back. Today in the Cheapo Spotlight, it's the X-Tech. Yeah, the MN30 for our Cheapo Multimeter Pleasure. Let's take a look. This shipped via Amazon for a whopping 16 bucks Canadian. Yeah, incredible. And that was like next day delivery. So, wow, hard to beat. Definitely in the Cheapo realm. Let's see how good it is. So a little X-Tech ship in one of these plastic bubble wraps. Always a lot of fun to get out of the box. But uh, hey, let's do that and take a look. Once out of that plastic enclosure, we have got the meter itself and a very tiny user manual. And I'm talking this thing is thin. Slim pickings, folks. But hey, you know, I guess it's not a really over zealous meter in terms of functionality so how much do we really need but that's it that's all the probes themselves are attached to the meter i know i know i'm not a big fan of that either but well we'll see how good they are now the unit itself takes two double a batteries and you get access just by removing that one phillips screw right there and you are in busyness in terms of the overall feel you know what Hey, it feels actually pretty decent. Um, I'm not going to say it's a super heavy duty looking meter, but it definitely feels solid in the hand. You don't have that rubber encasing. Uh, no, it's just a plastic, but quality wise, it seems like a fairly good plastic. Probably a little step up in terms of overall plastic quality than say your typical Anning meter. Speaking of adding, if we take one out and put it right beside Mr. MN30, you can see it is fairly uh, identical in terms of the overall size, height, and width. So it, it's a small meter, definitely not a full size meter by any means. Put out a uh, WH5000A and you can see it really dwarfs this little green guy. In terms of feature set, well, not much. You've got your standard hold button, NCV or non-contact voltage, flashlight. Yeah, what is with every meter having a flashlight? I don't know, but yeah, it's got one too. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So um, not a lot of bells and whistles. Now, unfortunately, in terms of feature set as well, it's nothing to get too excited about. It goes up to 600 volts, AC, DC, and resistance um, up to 10 mega ohm does have that continuity we'll see how well that is gonna sound apparently it kicks in around 30 ohm or so but uh, yeah I'm not expecting too much out of this guy take a look at the front facing of the unit we have our hold on the left hand side nothing fancy just your standard touch hold on the right hand we have the flashlight and in the middle the non-contact voltage detection as it says this is an auto sensing multimeter so it will let you know when your mother-in-law is close no, I wish that was the case. Now, we know what that auto sensing actually means. And honestly, it is usually nothing to get too excited about. It's supposed to determine whether or not you're testing voltage or in this case, resistance. But uh, well, yeah, we'll see how good it is. One thing I do like is the fact that that big power button is really nice and bright. So you're definitely gonna be able to see that no matter where you are. And it has that nice soft touch feel, not that cheap, cruddy plastic. So, hey, that's a good thing. At the bottom, we see our spec Cat 3 600 volt. Now, on the test leads themselves, they also do have a Cat 3 600 volt rating. So, hey, that's a good thing. Now, one thing that was really annoying, and I got to point this out, and I don't know why or why it happens, but take a look at those test leads. Yeah, they're not bad, but the tips actually do not come off. So we only have a finite bit of real estate here in terms of actual testing. The tips do not come off. That plastic encasing is there for the long run. So not a fan of that. I really like a little bit more metal on my tips. And wow, good thing I was able to say that without screwing it up. Okay. Now, of course, no tilt stand. Once again, I'm using this very neat stand and i have a link below thank you mike for sending this in some time ago it's come in really handy on the channel turning it on we have that power button pull down and voila nothing 
Okay, now I thought it had no batteries, but alas, it does. So, uh, yeah. Oh, wow. And now it's on. Ugh. Okay, let's try turning it off. Okay, so you do have to hold down for a little bit of time. Let's try that again. All right, so about four seconds or so, and then it turns on. A wee bit of a delay. Mm. Once the unit is turned on, I'm not a really big fan of the overall LCD display. It is small, and as you can see, uh, you really have to take it up to a certain angle before it becomes readable. Uh, yeah, so by default, it's not the greatest looking LCD out there. Now, of course, it's not meant to be in a tilt stand, so if we put it down on the ground, uh, yeah, once again, I mean, it's a little better, better to look at, but um, it is really finicky when it comes to the overall angle, so eh, something to take note of. We're going to start off with a precision voltage test with this X-Tech. Well, we all know X-Tech is now owned by FLIR, but they have kept the name. So here we go. Looking for 2.5 volts on the reference. And 2 point... It's fluttering. Wow, why is it fluttering so much? Not liking that. So it's having a hard time, for whatever reason, staying on that 2.50. Yeah, okay, let's try 5 volts. Well, that's a little better. We're going to try 7.5 volts. And once again, we do have some flutter, just not, not liking that flutter. Finally, we want to look at 10 volts DC. Ten point zero three two. Yeah, so, I mean, it's in range, but wow, I just do not like the way it is unable to make up its mind. Wow, interesting. Already, we've got a quick little voltage showdown between the Rich Meters 403B and the X Tech. Um, yeah, the Rich Meters, I kind of prefer the auto implementation. Once again, it is also an auto meter, it will adjust accordingly to what is being tested. Now, we're sitting in DC volts, and you can see they are both sitting at 0.82. Wow, that X Tech just can't make up its mind, but it's close enough. And let's start moving up. 2.4 volts, 2.49, 2.58, and some flutter, up, up, and away, 5.2 volts, 5.32, 5.33, going higher now, up to, let's try 17.1 volts, 17.3 for the Rich Meter, 17.3 for the X-Tech, and we're going to max it out now at 31.4 volts. 31.5 for the rich meters, and you can see where they have that high voltage indicator coming up on the display, and 31.6 for the X-Tech with uh, no high voltage indicator. So, yeah, I'm going to start moving the voltage up and down, and let's just see. I'm going to settle on something here. 13.5 volts. Um, I'd say maybe the X-Tech is slightly faster in terms of settling, but then again, it never really settles. It just seems to kind of start to go wonkers so eh, you know what all things said i'm gonna give this one to the rich meters there you go unfortunately the x tech does not do current not even milliamps not a nothing so if current is your thing yeah this meter is going to be absolutely no use to you i'm going to try a quick resistance test now sitting at nine mega ohm and yeah looking good eight mega ohm there we go, down to 7. Take it down to 4 mega ohm. Definitely not the fastest in terms of ranging. Down to 1 mega ohm. So, yeah, I guess it passed that test. 900. Let's go all the way down to 100. 100 kilo ohm, so. Yeah, all right, it is what it is, yeah. Um, we've only got the 20 mega ohm resistance capacity, so eh, I'll give it a pass. 
In order to enable the flashlight, just hold down on that flashlight button, give it a little click, and away you go. And it is really not that bright, actually. Um, yeah, that LED is just not uh, uber duper bright, but uh, hit it again with the finger and it disables the flashlight, so, eh. Next up, to a quick look at the NCV non-contact voltage. And once again, you just depress on the NCV button. And let's see, oh yeah. Well, something works. Okay, so that's a pass. It's nice and loud. Do have that visual indicator, so uh, yeah, good stuff. Yeah, baby, now it's continuity. You got it. Three, two, one. Oh, now before I start, it's gonna be a little bit difficult because we don't have a lot of real estate to work with. A very small tip. So yeah, bear with me. Alrighty, three, two, one. Wow, it's loud, but it is oh so slow, just like every other auto ranging meter out there. And what really sucks is that uh, even though this does have an LED indicator for the NCV, they didn't utilize that functionality with the continuity. Eh, sucks. Already Aphrodite, we are on the inside of the x -Tech. God, I gotta love that army green. I gotta say, you know, I wasn't a big fan of this green G.I. Joe thing going on, but yeah, it brings back some fond memories, so yeah, I kind of like it. Already starting off with the inside, yeah, no surprise, no shielding. Eh. Starting off with the input leads themselves, we have some really nice thick gauge wire here and that nice rubber grommet. So over time, the wear and tear is going to be minimalistic, thanks to that. Um, but uh, yeah, they are soldered in, soldered in quite well, actually. Nice big blobs of solder. But once again, yeah, there's not much you can do. If you don't like these leads, well, I guess technically you could desolder them and put another set in. But yeah, that's just a pain. Voltage input protection, not much. We have that one really sad looking PTC. That's it. That's all. So yeah, you want to be really careful around high voltage. Moving up the board here is our speaker piezo. And above that, this is our Holtec HT1621B. That is actually the LCD display driver for the unit. And right beside him, we have the main IC provided by Hycon Technologies, the HY16F. And over to the right of him, that is the EEP ROM 24C02B. And that is what is storing all that data configuration for the main IC. We have the one LED powered flashlight right here. Once again, it really wasn't very bright, so eh. But look at that NCV, non-contact voltage filament protruding and extruding all of that NCV goodness. So that's probably why we have such good NCV detection. I see this time and time again, when you have that nice metal uh, outlay, um, it really does make a difference rather than just some embedded wire in the PCB. So NCV wise, yeah, looking good. Closing thoughts on the X-Tech MN30 auto sensing multimeter. Well, it's a mixed bag. Hey, you know what? It's cheap. Well, at least I got it for cheap. How can you complain for 16 bucks? I mean, really, yeah, that is dirt cheap and it's definitely worth that. Now, what is it in terms of functionality? Well, not a whole lot. Doesn't do current, doesn't do capacitance, doesn't even do diode. We're strictly talking voltage and resistance. Yeah, that's it, that's all. The display itself, nothing to write home about. Yeah, liquid crystal digital technology, but uh, yeah, kind of lackluster at best. Do like the visual as well as audible indicator for the NCV. And once again, it does have really nice non-contact voltage. Uh, I tested it on a few other platforms and it just worked really, really nicely. All in all, it's a basic simple meter. And if you have basic needs, you can throw this in your glove compartment or toolbox and it's gonna serve you just fine. The X-Tech MN30 gets a solid 3.5 out of five stars. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Stay tuned, lots more coming on. And don't forget to add, enter those contests we have. Um, yeah, I'm giving away over a hundred bucks worth of free gear. Till the next one, keep on testing.